A common question in essential tremor is what are the range of symptoms, range of things that people could experience or expect to have happen in essential tremor? Obviously, tremor is in the name, and so we think of tremor as the key symptom or the key experience. For most people, this is tremor in uh, both hands or both upper arms, limbs. This may be worse in one hand or the other or start in one hand or the other, but one way or another, people will experience tremor in both the hands. You can also experience tremor in other areas like the face, tongue, voice, head and neck, legs. All of those other pieces of tremor aren't part of the definition of essential tremor, except the head and neck. Some people have tremor just in the head or neck. This means the same thing, really. Now, part of the definition of essential tremor is that you can have tremor just in the head or neck alone. That's a little controversial, and that could change in the next couple of years as people debate whether these tremors are all in the same family or all really the same thing. But for now, Main experience is tremor in both hands, maybe with tremor in other places, or tremor just in the head and neck. In addition to tremor, there's other things that people really commonly experience that sometimes get played down because, again, tremor is in the name, so we tend not to think beyond that. A big one that's pretty well accepted is changes in balance. This doesn't mean severe changes in balance, like the inability to stay balanced or inability to walk, but more subtle changes in balance that can spiral into bigger problems. So my favorite description of the change in balance is actually from a patient who's a really dedicated fisherman. He was quite irritated because he noticed that he really couldn't handle standing up in the boat anymore to fish. That was just too big a stress on the balance system, but standing on dry land was just fine. Another patient told me recently that she had gotten afraid to use the treadmill at the gym because she just felt like her balance was off, and so she had stopped doing that, and she had stopped doing stairs for exercise as well because she could feel this change in her balance. That's an illustration of how the balance change is usually pretty subtle. Hopefully you guys are not doing that heel-to-toe drunk test very often for the cops, but uh, could spiral into a bigger problem. When you feel that change, and you get a little nervous about falling or being off balance, then you start restricting your activities and pulling back on stuff that you want to do. That leads to less balance. Deconditioning or slowly doing less and less of your usual activities or exercise, when really the opposite is the way to go. Exercise is the one thing that can really help with that balance change by training different parts of your brain, different parts of your body to take over and push forward and get past that change in the balance. Uh, anything that safely stresses the balance system, walking outside on a path, or doing yoga, water aerobics where you have to move around a lot. There's a lot of different potential choices that uh, are fun exercise and really get the balance system in there. Another area of experience that I hear a lot about is with changes in mood whether that's anxiety or depression or anger. It's really unclear if changes in mood like anxiety are a primary problem in essential tremor, meaning the essential tremor, whatever is causing that disorder, is causing the problems with anxiety or depression. Or if simply there's a very strong connection between changes in mood and movement disorders like tremor. And so those symptoms can feed off of each other and either help or worsen each other. Certainly, uh, trying to treat anxiety, get coping mechanisms together, treat depression, can make a big impact in helping treat tremor itself, even just cope with it. So I try to tell people that there's different escape hatches. You can focus on the tremor itself, use that escape hatch to treat the tremor directly, or you can think about treating the anxiety or the depression as a different escape hatch. You go through at different times to help make progress in your symptoms. There's a lot of talk about whether or not these are primary problems in essential tremor. Either way, I think it's important symptoms and experiences to ask about and think about. Finally, I often get asked if there's thinking or memory changes in essential tremor. This is really unclear. There's a bunch of research groups trying to help figure this out. Right now, it's not so certain. Maybe as people age, they're at risk to have changes in their thinking and memory for many different reasons. 
the central tremor is really common, especially if people get older. So it may just be two common things happening to the same person. Or again, it might be part of the central tremor itself for a certain percentage of people. That one's more in the research category question. Certainly, if you have any concerns about your thinking and memory, whether or not you think that's related to the essential tremor, that's definitely something that we can look into.